Amazon. Okay, so now, ladies and gentlemen, we look at this. And this is what we've talked about. This is what we previously talked about, Alex, which are tests we're based off of, right? So now what we're going to do is I'm going to throw in a new formula. And we're not going to sh I'm not going to show you how to find the formula just yet. I just kind of want to explain the new form of our quadratic, all right? So we will learn later today on how to go from this form of a quadratic to what we call vertex form, which is right here. This form says a times x minus h squared plus k. These are duplicate forms of a quadratic. Okay? They are going to produce the exact same graph. All right? There's no difference. It's like me saying, you guys understand this, this is a slope of a That's a slope of a or I'm sorry, that's a equation of a Yeah, it's an equation of a line, right? That's also the equation of a line. But these are totally different, right? They kind of look different to each other, right? But they're both equations of lines. We can use both of these to graph a line. Just like we have two different equations for a quadratic, we're going to use them differently to graph them. Now, so a lot of things are going to be the same. However, I want you guys to kind of understand how we can be able to kind of work with this. So when Robert, when we're looking at this, up here, why, is it, why would it be helpful to have a, have a quadratic in this form? Well, just like when we had in the quadratic form, we had, we had, we had ways to kind of figure out all the, how to graph it, right? We said axis of symmetry, you have your vertex, and all that kind of stuff, right? Right? Well, here, we can do the same thing, and it's a little bit different. So now, if I have a quadratic in vertex form, the vertex is h comma k. So if I have a formula in here, all you need to do is take the h, or take the opposite of h, right? Because in the formula, it's opposite of h. Take the opposite of h and k. And there you go. You have your vertex. You don't need to do axis symmetry and plug axis symmetry back in. You got the vertex right there, h, k. We're going to go and explain. We're going to look at one of those. But there's going to be your vertex. You can easily go ahead and find it. All right? The next thing is, what about is your graph, is your vertex going to be maximum or minimum? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be the same thing. If a, again, is greater than 0, all right, that means you're going to be positive, you're going to have your vertex is going to be a minimum. And what you can say is your parabola opens up. And if a is less than 0, your vertex is a max, and your parabola opens down. OK? So so far, all we really know is if I have some in form, I can just find the new vertex and see if it opens up or down. Pretty basic, right? Um, the next thing that's important about this is if we were to kind of look at this, what did these h and our k really tell us to do? Well, if we have a new vertex, the h and the k, you can see they're going to move where the vertex is going to be. But I will explain at least what h and k are going to do real quick. Um, so your h, if you guys remember, is going to be shift your graph horizontally. And k is going to shift your graph vertically. OK? Now, the last thing I just want to go over Ashley for you is what about the x and the y-intercepts? Is that the same as finding the x and y-intercepts for this? Yeah, it is. If you want to find the x-intercept, I'll kind of do it over here. The x-intercept is when y equals 0 or f of x equals 0. Now, here's why I like doing it in vertex form. 0 equals a times x minus h squared plus k. The only variable that I actually really have to solve for is x. I'm going to have constants for a, h, and k. So ladies and gentlemen, to solve for x, would I have to do any type of factoring or anything? Imagine these are all going to be numbers. Your a, your a, h, and k are all numbers. Do you have to do any more factoring or anything? No. All you simply have to do is use inverse operations. Subtract the k to the other side. Divide by the a. Square root and add the h. 
it's very, very, it's a lot simpler to solve it when you have it in this vertex form. Because you don't have to worry about factoring or anything like that. You can simply, or quadratic formula, you can simply just solve it from right there. And then the same thing goes for the y-intercept is when x equals 0. And again, you're just going to have your y-intercept is going to equal k in this formula. Huh? Um, no, actually, no, it's all right. La, 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 la. My bad. No, it's not always going to equal um, your k, because that's going to be 0. You might have a transformation. So it's not going to be k. Um, but what you'll do is you'll just plug it in. So you'd say uh, y equals a times 0 minus h squared plus k. And then you just need to figure out um, what your value of y would be. Because remember, these are all real numbers. These are going to be real numbers. No, because h could be 3, right? 0 minus 3 would be negative 3, 9. 9 times a, let's say, is 1, right? So that's ten, 9, and then plus k could be 0, so it would be 9, right? So remember, all those are k. So do you guys see how this can help us out, OK? Just remember, so when you guys have those, that's what you guys are going to apply that for. So I asked you guys last night to do, to graph.